I kept thinking that we're gonna go to like a civil war and it's gonna go hot and we're just, it's all gonna, you know, I don't know, I didn't know, we didn't, nobody knew, so we just thought that it was gonna, we were preparing for the... When you hear somebody, this is something else, guys, I want you to guys remember this as well. When you hear somebody saying things like this, okay, um, I wish there were, I bet there are like models in psych or something that, that explain this better. To get a holistic understanding of something, I think the average human being needs one to three pieces of information. I truly do believe that. And those one to three pieces of information, they feel like 30 or 40 or 50. If I can show you three stories of a given subject or thing, you will believe that you have a holistic understanding of so much more than you really do. We're trying to save the country. We thought we were saving the country. We, I thought I was hoping to save the country. Do you have a lawyer right now? <clears throat> no. Okay. We're clear to bully the f out of the suspect then. No lawyer. Clear for takeoff. Can I, can you give some background information on this video? So this was on January 6th. This was one of the rioters that tased one of the police officers. This dude is 38, by the way, Jesus. I wanna give you an opportunity to kinda, just kinda help us understand, you know, what happened from, from your perspective, okay? Can we get some background of this? This is a random guy. It's a guy that tased one of the cops. He was the kid that tased one of the cops. What do I have in my stream title? Listening to interrogation of January 6th writer, guy who tased cops. Control T, guy tased cop January 6th. I wonder if there's enough information in my stream title where you can literally find Daniel Rodriguez. You literally have it. You can Google it. It's all right there for you, okay? I feel like you kind of want to talk about it. Um, I feel like you, you kind of want to get it off your chest. <laughs> It's okay, man. It's okay. Oh, God. Also, to be clear, what is your worst case scenario for assaulting an officer? What do you, like, we're not looking at, like, life in prison, right? Wait, is there even a minimum to jail time? Assu Let's assume he has a 100% clean record, right? Let's assume his record is clean. He hasn't, you know, no priors or anything, right? There's a chance that he might even never even serve a day in jail, right? Is it, now, to be fair, didn't the guy die? Um, not because of anybody being tased, no. Destiny's not really a good mood today because these students will be getting banned any other day. The problem is this will fall on forever so he's if he gets off like, no, no, sure, sure, I know. To be fair, I'm not taking away from the idea that like, obviously this can be stressful and shit. But I mean like, to, to put things a little bit into perspective, this guy's not facing like, you know, the death penalty or something, you know? Uh, Enrique and I interview a lot of people. We talk to a lot of people who have been in the same situation you've been in. There's no shame in crying. There's no shame in uh, and you having uh, a tough time with processing it, it's, it's understandable. The last couple of months have been really hard, right? It's been difficult. Yeah. This is an opportunity here for you to let us know and help us understand, because right now we don't. We don't frankly understand exactly what happened from your perspective. And I think that there's an opportunity here for us to get clarity on what what went down and what you what you see happen. But if I do that, I don't think it's going to reduce my sentence or something. Well, true. Let us read you some paperwork here, and then we can talk about how you might be able to help yourself out of your situation. Okay. I'm going to read this to you. Just let me, uh, excuse me one more time. For that. Uh, yeah. Let me know. Um, if you understand everything, and then if you have any questions, you know, um, uh, you have the right to remain silent. Any, anything you say can't. Hey, hold on. Why are we saying this, okay? How the f this soppy shit works on people I'll never know why do you guys assume that every time somebody's crying in a situation that could be like incredibly important the rest of their life it's fake I, like I, like I don't even want to call you guys sociopaths I don't think you are I think a lot of you guys just have I think that the normal I'm about to throw a lot of bad bunny words at you I think the normal cissexual heterosexual white male middle class experience and I mean every single one of those words 
exposes you to an incredibly limited spectrum of how people can react and respond to things. I, and, I, and I think that that, unfortunately, all of those words together probably describe, my guess is gonna be like 80% of my chat, right? Um, I, I like whenever people see shit like, oh my God, like he's fake crying. It's like, what are you, the guy's literally in a fucking interrogation with co cops, right? This He's already in a situation that's more stressful than probably like 95% of people will be in at any point in their lives, um, save maybe for like women giving birth or something. Uh, like th this is, it's it wouldn't surprise me if somebody was actually crying here. Like that's not surprising at all. Jesus, like chill. And it's, yeah, it's not even like regular state police or local, this is the fucking FBI. Like, damn. Jesus. Our goal today is just kind of to get your, get an understanding of what happened, right? Um, because DC kind of has their version of what happened and kind of how they see things. And now it's your opportunity to, to let us know, you know, what, what really happened. Because I, I gotta be honest with you, like they, they gave me this case, right? And they were like, this guy assaulted a police officer, you know? So I was like, okay, you know. Can you please crop out the black bars? You know what? I can't. It's a goddamn fucking CCTV footage. You don't need to have 4K, all right, IMAX quality presentation on a goddamn police interrogation, all right? Go home, go ask your mom and dad for some duct tape, okay? And tape it up on the sides of your monitor and pretend that they're not there. Jesus Christ. But what we got here, what's going on, just so, you know, prepared. I feel like there's like 80 of you right now, like, okay, what random dumb fucking comment can I type to get Destiny more fucking triggered? Destiny, can you change the opacity from 95 to 96? <clears throat> Destiny, can you dole the color scheme a bit on the game so it doesn't bleed through as much? Destiny, on your webcam, can you put it 10 pixels higher? It's not centered you know, for the interview and everything. Um, and I, I started like finding these videos on YouTube um, of these these guys posting uh, Armin Rez, um, We Are LA, uh, 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 Weber's Way. You, are you familiar with those? You know, those guys, those YouTube videos of all the, the protests and rallies in LA, right? And at, at that point, man, like I was, I was thinking to myself, cause I, I thought I had an understanding of what, what was going on, right? They said, oh, this guy's, you know, assaulted a police officer. But then, then I saw you, um, there was a, I think it was Hollywood. There were police there standing, right? They were just maintaining the peace, you know? And um, there was this um, Antifa guy dressed in all black, you know? And he was just agitating him and just kind of like, like as if he as if he wanted them to to, to hurt, do something yeah right like yeah. he was instigating cops, yeah he's making them look bad so that the cops can do something right. and then give you all film and the cops are abusing you now and exactly exactly and then i see you like intervening and you were like hey hey dude chill out like we're here just <laughs> we're just we're, we're we're you know we're protesting like you need to calm down it's not about that it's not about, you know, that violence and, and, and... Right now, the police officers, uh, this, I don't know what is so obvious or what isn't obvious. So I don't know, this for because for half of you, it's going to be like, oh, wow, I didn't realize this at all because I have no people skills. And for the other half, it's going to be like, yeah, obviously, this, okay? So, so the cop right now is just trying to establish good rapport, right? Like, bro, I saw videos of you with cops. Like, you were awesome. Like, you were protecting the cops. You were making sure people weren't protesting, blah, blah, blah. He's just trying to get on his good side, right? To figure out, like, well, what, you know, to get the kid opening up, to get the kid talking more, to get him a little bit less nervous, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that anger because he was he was riled up, he he was super riled up, and you were like you were pretty calm for the situation, you know, and and the officer was calm. He you know he didn't do anything. I I was I was kind of surprised at his restraint, you know, um, but just just kind of seeing that. I'm um, not even sure what videos you're talking about. Was it with the wheelchair guy? Uh, it wasn't that, I don't know if it was <laughs> that same day. You know the wheelchair guy? Yeah, I do, I do. I saw that one, yeah. He, he got, he went, um, he, so the police were, they made a line in the intersection. And, so uh, this is like a dream, right? They have him, he's like, now he's like voluntarily telling stories and shit, right? And then also, the JCS guy never talks about this, but I'm going to keep harboring on this, okay? Because I think it's a good insight, all right? 
A lot of people, in my opinion, just want to be heard, okay? A lot of people just want somebody to listen to them. And now probably, probably, unironically, for the first time in this kid's life, he has two people that appear to be completely enraptured by what he's saying. So if I have to guess for the rest of this interview, this kid is probably going to be an open book in terms of talking to these people because it feels like they actually want to hear what he has to say. He goes to with his wheelchair and he- will, I say kid, he's 38, sorry. But rolls up to them and he has a camera and he just starts like, like sticking it like this, like, oh, and they're like the cop's face. Uh -huh. And um, that's when I first started going to the rallies. I was still pretty new at that time. I didn't know anybody and uh, I I grabbed his wheelchair and I pulled him back like six or eight feet. Uh -huh. And the cops saw me, I did it right in front of him. I'm like, dude, what are you doing, you know? Yeah. And uh, ever since then, they've, uh, you know, cause like, uh, the, how we met that guy in the wheelchair was he was he was coming across the intersection the, before that police the police started their line right there he was coming over in the intersection and uh, on the crosswalk and he was acting like a victim like like you know mm -hmm. like hey are you okay you need help and like do you, and then like he was had a bunch of attitude and didn't like us and like there were some other people around it that were just like oh fuck him or mm -hmm. oh he's you know and like so like he was he was not with us he was he was there like against us and then like we're like like an agitator. Right? Yeah, yeah, and then and then I don't know what happened after. This was a while back. This was a long time ago. And then like, whatever happened, then like it started getting more intense, and the cops came and did their like line. I think I think there was only like eight. There were like eight BLM guys that day, mm -hmm. and um, or Antifa guys or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they came because I guess a week or two before that there was a big fight, and I wasn't there. I didn't go to the rallies yet. There was a fight. There was like. There was something called like the Unity Bridge, and there was like this guy named Ricky Rebel, like some gay guy, and he's all singing like, like M A G A, like like it's all like a celebration, a festival, and I guess like a big fight broke out. Uh huh. So um, I didn't know about that fight, but I found found out from Armin Rez videos that they're rallying there in Beverly Hills. So I'm like, oh, I see this. Let me go down there. Uh huh. So that was the first time I went down there, and they had um. They had come back, these eight guys or whatever, and you know, they're all angry and they're like in like helmets and like goggles and we're just in regular clothes and I'm like, hey, what's going on with you guys? And they're all angry and I started trying to talk to them and like find some common ground and um, then that wheelchair guy came and he, he like linked, wanted to link up with them, like they're like, so like six or seven, eight black guys and like you know he's all like will hey what's up i seen him you know he's wheels like hey what's up guys fuck these guys you know oh, the cool guys are here like that's what he told him i think he's like oh the cool guys are here yeah fuck these guys i don't know so um so i told him i'm like oh my god you suck his dick and like you know i just I'm, i know you guys have seen those videos uh -huh. they bought some and stuff to me i'm like you know you're like oh you're right there by his dick suck it pull your mask down suck it so after that, like, that guy just went after me and hated me, and <laughs> so that's how that happened. So he was the... Wouldn't it be funny if you, like, you know, what if you just, like, you know, what if you just, like, suck my dick? Wouldn't that be funny, like, if you did that? Like, I mean, like, in a, you know, in, like, an insulting kind of way, like... <laughs> ...lined with Antifa BLM, mm -hmm. and then they started, like, okay, this is this guy with the glasses, take his pictures, you know, he's no good. So that's how I got on their radar. Oh, I got it. So then... We all we all got on their radar somehow or some way. They, what they would do is they would come to the rallies and they would take pictures of us and just consistently getting intel on us, um, following you to your car or trying to dox you on social media, your license plate, where you work, your name, your address, whatever. You the know, state you live in. Know, you know they've had they've had that happen to them and have people come to their house and one guy got jumped and some guy named Lewis he. Uh, he was former Antifa, and then he like saw what was going on, like this is not what I want to be a part of, and he came to the Trump side, uh -huh. and they jumped him, they really messed him up, <clears throat> um, he's all scarred, he's got still scars to this day, mm -hmm. and um... Yeah, Danny, I think what what my partner was about to say... Sorry, I'm, yeah, I Yeah, no, it is, sorry. Why don't you finish it, yeah. that thought, because that was a good thought you had. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I appreciate the, the story, because yeah. just, just like what you're saying, it's it important. gives context yeah. to, to those things that, because yeah, you're right. I did, 
You saw the wheelchair. Right? I saw the wheelchair, but it was only a snippet of it, right? It was only like you, like, but I, we don't have the whole story, right? That's, and that's Remember, the goal is always going to be able, is, is always going to be to make you feel like if I have more information, if you can just explain more of the story to me, it's going to make your argument or case better because just if I, as long as I have more context maybe that can exonerate you somehow right that's always going to be the um that's always going to be the feeling that they want to leave you with so that you're always like volunteering more information right that's a big thing with with the media and everything you take little things and and so what i what i'm trying to say is that is my, is, my, my best friend he had a brother that was in a wheelchair and took so much advantage of it and i like kind of just like if you're in a wheelchair, okay. Like you said, like if you go, if you're respectful, polite, or but this guy was like victimizing himself. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a bit. So I was like, oh, you're not gonna do that with me. I'm gonna treat you like normal. Yeah. But he, he didn't like that. So that's why they came after him. Okay. And 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 that's what I'm saying is when. <laughs> True. When Stick it to those wheelchair wheelers. That's what we call them. And getting the whole picture of of actually who Danny is, you know, I saw that that there's like two sides to you you know there was this side that that uh kind of dc had you know portrayed and, and showed you know and that this is your guy this is what he did but then i started looking in like i said and i, I saw this danny who stood in between this angry guy and, and a law enforcement officer just in a, in a t-shirt and his red hat you know he wasn't the one with the gun and a baton and handcuffs you didn't have anything and you stood in between to protect this trained law enforcement officer, right? Yeah. And, and you and to and even to say something, because like, what what person nowadays would even say something, right? So many people just ignore and look the other way when they see, you know, d like these wrongdoings, right? Yeah. But you actually had the guts to say something to that guy, and uh, and to put yourself you know, in that position, in that uncomfortable position. Did you see the day that they all came, like 200 of them, and I stood in the street? Mm-hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. and, and so, I think that's kind of what, what I'm trying to, like, understand. I don't know what happened either. Is, I, I want to know that Danny, though. I, I want to know, I want to know that Danny that, you know, that kind of intervened in that situation. And I want to know how that Danny got to January 6th. Um, Your story is an important story. <laughs> I just think that... <laughs> um, I don't want to seem crazy or like a conspiracy theorist because you guys are, it's going to come out and I'm going to get locked up because like, I believe this and look, it's going to put me in jail. Well, look, we've done this for a long time. We've talked to, like I told you, we talked to a lot of people and a lot of people um, are worried about being judged when they talk to law enforcement that we're going to have a, an opinion. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now, we don't, we don't hold judgment over you. We want. Right. We it's want to be the jury and the judge. And no, it's be no, a but like judge. even 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 as a fellow human being, right? That's what we're telling you. Is we're looking at you today as a as a fellow human, as a fellow citizen of this country. Something that's really important to keep in mind is that like interrogation techniques don't work because they're like somehow mind controlling you into being hypnotized into doing like crazy shit or whatever. Um, they work because we have like basic human faculty that all of us kind of rely on as social creatures. And they're so incredibly powerful that um, something that's funny is that as you, as you listen to this, um, and, and I guess in one of the JCS videos, they even went over this because like a cop falls for all of these. They work even if you know that, they, um, that they're using them. And it's funny because this kid, it, it wouldn't surprise me but it sounds like this kid is actually, he's either watched JCS videos or he's talked to an attorney that has explained all this. Because the kid has accurately said over and over again, like, um, you don't want, you don't care about my story. You're just trying to incriminate me. Like, the jury is going to decide, like, blah, blah, blah. This is just going to get me in trouble. Like, he knows. The, the kid actually seems to have a far better than most understanding that basically anything he says here is going to f*** him over. There, there's almost no point in having this conversation. Um, and he's just, yeah, he's he's just giving them more ammunition to use later in a court date. He seems to understand that. But despite that, 
it seems like he's still probably going to have a lot to say to him. As somebody who has lived here and put an in investment into this country of your, your work and your, you grew up here and look. I don't have any loyalty to any other country. It's just America. And this is all I know and this is all I want. And I don't care about any other part of the world except for our team. So how, how did the Danny that stood on the line in between law enforcement and Antifa BLM, how did you get, get to that point? What happened in your life? Like, how did you start going to these rallies? Um, InfoWars. And just, just InfoWars? So like Alex Jones stuff? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's been around a long time. I know lots of people listen to Alex Jones. Alex um, Jones has some good information. He's got you know, I just out there information. I just but. I just want wanted to um <clears throat> I don't know what these FBI people believe, so it's possible that he's being sincere. One of the kid's biggest fears is the kid has stated, right? Like, remember earlier he said, I don't want you to feel like I'm saying stuff that just sounds like a conspiracy theorist. He doesn't want to be labeled as a conspiracy theorist, right? Notice how when he, when he brings up Alex Jones, how this FBI guy is kind of buffering it with like, oh yeah, Alex Jones. Now he's not gonna do some stupid shit like, oh, I know Alex Jones, I love him, right? He's not gonna say some blatantly obvious shit like that, right? He's going to, uh, he, you know, he's like, oh, Alex Jones, he's got some good stuff, he's got some shitty stuff. Like, you know, he's got some good, he says some things is true, he says some things kind of out there, right? He kind of gives this um, enough there, this plausible uh, engagement with his content where it's like, you have some room to bring him up and not sound like a conspiracy theorist, you know? I tried to join the army. When, okay. when Trump became president, and I was already 35. Yeah. And I have like a bad, you know, history of being arrested or tickets and stuff like that. You saw my record. Mm -hmm. So they didn't take me. And um, I just thought that I could still contribute by, um, you know, I didn't take an oath, but I could still stand up for those same things on my own. You know, I don't gotta get a paycheck. I could still be a, uh, do those things. And um, I wanted to go to the rallies to make the, the and there was too much enemy out there and I wanted to bring them over to our side. I don't, when I say our side, I, I still feel like I'm on your side. Like mm -hmm. we're on the same side, even though you're, um, Like you said, the uh, patriot side, right? Like you're. I don't. I don't. It was so fast. I was a good guy, and then instantly I became a bad guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me about that, Danny, because you said info war wars and. I just, I just saw that there's a there's people that have taken over this country from inside. Mm -hmm. Globalists and unelected officials, elitists. You know, people who are. When he says stuff like this, globalists, unelected officials, elitists, right? One of the reasons why I get concerned about populist rhetoric is if I ignore the rest of the conversation and listen to just this line, he could be talking about the left's messaging or the right's messaging, depending on what we're talking about, right? Globalists, elitists, unelected officials, right? It's one of the reasons why I get worried about hearing similar types of rhetoric like this repeated on both ends. Obsessed with power and control. And, um, you know, a lot of the, the, if you go to LA, you see homeless people and then you see a Ferrari or Rolls Royce drive by them. Yeah. I don't think, I, don't, I think this is awful that <clears throat> it's so lopsided and, and, you know, I just like the system, something's wrong and the, the politicians are, you go to Garcetti's house, he's, his house is two blocks. Mm -hmm. um, Gavin Newsom. Um, Pelosi's nephew. He his 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 winery is not being shut down. He's his uh, plump chap, whatever. You know, he's he's. They're all making money. They're all not being affected. And they almost brag about it. And uh, while well, there's still like homeless camps all over LA, and I was actually in LA not too long ago, and it seems like every time I go back there, there's more and more homeless. And just like you said, there's like a Ferrari or a mansion two blocks away and there's just people struggling and there's other people like regular folks like you who are like 
you know, buying a house, helping your mom buy a house in Fontana, you know, and, and, and it's even that's hard, right? Like, yeah, it's, no, it's too, it was, yeah, we lost the house. That cheap house out way in the middle of Fontana, mm -hmm. just couldn't, couldn't even do that. It's ridiculous that the housing price is here now. But I just, I just thought that, um, you know, they, they, they lied all about Trump, saying that he's a bad guy. He's Can you pause the video? I have to get my pizza. All right, Tomo one GE. Tell us when you're back, okay? Chad, do we even believe in a housing crisis? I mean, in certain areas, yeah, for sure. Or like, there, there's an affordability problem. Absolutely, right? In almost every major city in the U.S., it's growing. Now, <clears throat> this is for a variety of reasons. And there is affordable housing out there, but nobody wants to live. <laughs> nobody wants to live like in the Midwest or some shit. But Tomo one GE, you need to post a picture in chat of your pizza too when you come back or your IP banned forever. He's back. Okay, post a picture of your pizza on Imager. Good luck. Okay, Tomo's getting a picture for us. The interrogator sounds super insincere, don't you think? Is this only obvious to us as observers or do you think the interrogator hears it too? Wait, what? They sound super, they sound super sincere. What are you talking about? I think they, they sound great right now. Are you just assuming that everybody is insincere because you already know that they're interrogators? Or I think that you're reading, I think that you're, you're biasing your, your read on the situation. I think they sound fine. Racist and a horrible president and all this. So no matter what they did to defeat him, it was justified. Mm -hmm. Cheat, lie, steal, whatever. Trump is orange man bad and all that, right? So. We saw that, we saw that um, Joe Biden doesn't have a lot of support. He didn't rally. He didn't have people going to his rallies. And yet he, it was a landslide victory. Here's the article. Okay, okay. I'll read it when we're done with this. It just, you know, it doesn't take, you don't have to be that bright to see that it's, it was something wasn't right and it was rigged and there's all these people saying stop the steal and. So when, when did you, you started going to the rallies like when? I think in August. And is that the same time when you started following InfoWars, or was it InfoWars oh, no. before no, that? No, no, I've been following InfoWars for 2008, 2009. Maybe. Oh, okay, so a long time, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Cause but, he, but he's the one who, Alex Jones and InfoWars were the ones who kind of put it out there, you know, that there's other news that's not on the TV. Yeah. They don't want you to show, you know, there's there's a half hour of news and they gotta put weather and sports in there. They don't tell you what happened in the day or, yeah. you know, they don't tell you <clears throat> a lot of things. So, so, so I was just to try to seek information is what it was. I, was trying to find I think this kind of idea as well is like kind of important. Um, the idea that like, and I know there there have to be limits, but I think we went too far in one direction. If you're not willing to engage with a certain topic and somebody else is somewhere else, people are gonna watch that other person do it. This kind of plays into that argument that I had with the one guy a while ago about like, should universities platform dangerous speakers? Well, if you're not, then they're gonna be platformed in other places. And believe me, those other forums are gonna be having way worse conversations about those topics than what you could be guiding the truth and answers and when I thought I found the truth and answers I thought it was up to me to I don't know I just it's like when you like there's a saying like uh, to know better is knowing better to know better is to do better you know mm -hmm. so it's like okay I know what's going on and nobody's I have friends that aren't going to the rallies they like Trump but they're not involved I have you know my mom she supports Trump but she's not getting anybody on his side she's not arguing about him I'm like, well, I can do this. I can go talk to people and try to bring them up, like educate them. And, you know, because they, they really are, they, they're, they're, kill, they're killing Trump supporters, shooting them in the head and beating them up and, and in school and the public, everything, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I kept thinking that we're going to go to like a civil war and it's going to go hot and we're just, it's all going to, you know, I don't know. I didn't know. We didn't, nobody knew. So we just thought that it was gonna, we were preparing for the. When you hear somebody, this is something else, you guys, I want you to guys remember this as well. When you hear somebody saying things like this, okay? Um, I wish there were, I bet there are like models in psych or something that, that explain this better. To get a holistic understanding of something, I think the average human being needs 
one to three pieces of information. I truly do believe that. And those one to three pieces of information, they feel like 30 or 40 or 50. If I can show you three stories of a given subject or thing, you will believe that you have a holistic understanding of so much more than you really do. So for instance, if I give you three stories of uh, police officers beating the fuck out of a black person, you will believe the whole police system is around the core. If I give you three stories of immigrants um, raping uh, natives in Sweden, you will believe that immigrants are all rapists, right? You only need like, it's. I think it's literally like one to three stories in your brain is enough to just like, oh, I totally know this. So when you're listening to, um, when you're listening to Alex Jones or some far right or some very far left piece of media or whatever, and you're you're getting like one or two of these, you only need a few of these stories in your head to be like, yeah, I think the civil war is coming. Like I, I do like, you've heard about all the stories of like, you know, conservatives getting killed, uh, you know, Antifa killing people, Antifa getting killed, you know, uh, all writers killing people. Like you only need a few of these to think that there's this massive problem when in reality it's like, okay, wait, 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 back the fuck up, okay? You've got like two examples of a bad thing happening in a world with billions of people, in a country with over 330 million people. Like, chill. You haven't established a trend at all, you know? Um, okay, Tomo EJ or whatever, good job. You did it, you survived. We're trying to save the country. We thought we were saving the country. We, th I thought I was hoping to save the country. So you started going to the rallies in August of 2020, is that right? Yes, sir. And those were all the Trump ra Trump rallies in like Huntington Beach, like in your um, you're saying, or? Um, I would go normally regularly to the Beverly Hills rallies. Okay. And uh, I went to some Huntington Beach rallies and then I would do some, some, you know, like uh, Garcetti's house or mm -hmm. somebody made a flyer and then we would go out and get a flyer and then we'd go. What, what was you, oh, sorry. Who would you usually go with? I would just go by myself, really. Oh. Is that is that how you got into it? Just you just saw a flyer. I think everybody. Then... Well, I saw it on Armin Res. Mm -hmm. I um I think he was like on Facebook. Okay. And then I just by accident got got like a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Can you turn the video up? Do you need been more volume? Park years ago when Trump came to town in uh, 2016. And in that, in that park in Beverly Hills, called Beverly Gardens, um, it was a Trump protest. There was a thousand anti-Trump people there. Mm -hmm. And I showed up. There was like four, five, six of us that were for Trump. So that park wasn't new to me. I actually went there and I stood, I, I argued with two, three hundred people there for eight and a half hours, nine hours. Was that the and Trump rally ringtone? annihilated every single one of them. I just beat everyone, the two or three hundred people arguing against Trump and I just, they didn't have anything. And I thought that that was like one of my greatest days in my life and I thought it was something that I needed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of answers and information and I was, you know, cause like I said, like, like I said, I, I really thought that it was gonna be like, a lot of us thought that it was gonna be like a civil war, like there was gonna be, straight on like like the like the original civil war you know like mm -hmm. almost you know like brothers and sisters and fathers and you know everyone's fighting each other right so in my in my mind i felt that the more people we before it gets to that point the more people i can educate or bring over or or just make them neutral or see that you know, I'm a Trump supporter and they're, they're lying about us, you know, and, you know, talk to me or something. You know, I was just trying to make it better if I, in any way I could, mm -hmm. you know, one person at a time. And that's why I would go to the rallies and I would try to find the, the most angry person or the most trouble, make the biggest troublemaker or whoever, like, you know, from the whatever. And I would try to talk to them or like, you know, find some common ground. And that's essentially what I was just trying to do, is just trying to essentially campaign. I was just campaigning at a rally, at rallies and mm -hmm. on my own. And really that's how everybody, everybody just showed up at those rallies by themselves. And we all just started talking to each other. You, know, and you had that one thing to bring you together. And yeah, kind of yeah. 
Mm-hmm. When did you become convinced that there was going to be a, like a civil war? Well, it was always looming in the back of our minds, you know, because um, I mean, it almost happened with Hillary and Trump because um, we felt Hillary. See, the the big the, the Trump movement happened then with with Hillary in 2015, 2016 and everything. So we all thought that there was a be civil war then. We all didn't trust Obama. We're learning about like Jade Helm and the FEMA camps. You know, why are they ordering all these body bags and what's all this military movement and you know, cough these plastic coffins and like there's just hundreds of thousands, you know. Mm-hmm. So it started like triggering reactions and in, in in my mind that like you know this country is. I mean. That's how Rome fell. Rome fell from within, right? Sure. I mean, it's it like was, all the standard like conservative memes we hear, right? America, or it's being infiltrated, and mm-hmm. then they're taking it down from within. So Trump became president. Trump became president. And you wanted to join the army uh, uh, in response to him <laughs> yeah. like, becoming president? I actually did, yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, I actually went to go to the to the recruiting office and try to join and at that time, Trump was still seen as like not a good person. Like, it right. was, um, well, it was in the very beginning, and I went in there with my truck. I, I volunteered for Trump. I even I did door to door and everything. I went there to the recruiting office with my Trump shirt, and okay. and I got some weird looks. And I was like, man, you guys, this, you guys are not for Trump here. Like, I don't get it. But they just didn't follow politics. Yeah. And um, I mean, that's super noble that that you feel so compelled volunteer for the army because you know that you're motivated because the president was elected kind of inspired you right yeah 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 so um what's the question yeah yeah so i guess what i was going to ask you is you you know at some point you thought there'd be a civil war was that did that become more real to you in 2020 well when they said that Joe Biden won the election, and I saw a lot of video footage of them like stealing, like the, pull, the pulling the cases up. underneath the, the yeah, table and all that. yeah, and there was like there was postal workers giving testimony about you know this. My supervisor told me this, and this is not normal, and all these ballots and this and that. So we knew that we knew that our 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 system was not. There's no point in voting anymore. That, that it's over. That what what made this country great, and you vote into and and um, you elect your president. We can't even do that anymore. Like, they 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 saw that. I think what I my beliefs are that over an overwhelming a number of people came out to vote for Trump, and he actually did win that election, the popular vote and the electoral vote, mm-hmm. and and I think that they saw that he was just so popular and he's not going to lose this next the, his re-election because the economy is so strong and they brought up the virus and the, it's like the I think the virus is, was meant more to kill the economy than, than to kill people it was, it was really hurting his reputation you know because he has a, a ego and a big reputation for being a, a businessman and, and all that and then they just want to blame him for it. anyways they they, they 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 made sure that the election was was lost and there's no point in voting anymore. So it's like I'm thinking they're gonna come around like yeah they're gonna come around us. Mm-hmm. The Trump supporters. Yeah, we felt we felt we always felt that the Trump supporters were gonna get rounded up, even when it was Hillary. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm thinking right now like that's kind of a scary thought, right? to like feel like you're going to be rounded up for it's, what you believe it's reality you know yeah that's that's scary right what what kind of what'd you guys do to to kind of prepare for that or like like because if it was me i just would i, I wouldn't i don't know like I, i'm hesitant to use like legal terms or whatever because i'm, I'm just not 100 percent as much but like it sounds like this is like a good bit to kind of get towards talking about motive um, the difference between maybe like, um, you know, maybe like, uh, there, I think there's like a first degree assault, second degree assault, something like that. Um, 
if you can get this person saying stuff like, oh yeah, like we bought, like this would be the most extreme example, but like, oh yeah, like we bought tasers and we were practicing using them, you know, so that we would know how to tase somebody, blah, 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 right? That would go pretty far <coughs> to a jury. Um, if you're, I, I, this is never probably gonna go to jury trial, but it would go pretty far towards like, oh, like look, like this person knew what they were doing. They had these devices in advance. They've literally trained with these things, you know, stuff like that. Um, they're, they're doing a good job of trying to build towards that in an organic conversation rather than like, what did you guys do to prepare for January 6th? What were the weapons that you wanted to use? How did you prepare, blah, 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 right? Just let that happen, right? Like, you know, if, if you feel like you're going to be rounded up for what you believe, you know, what did you do to to kind of... They're also really good at, like, restating things that you've said to try to, like, build towards your motive in a reasonable way, right? Um, like, they're not, not they're not trying to give him, they're not trying to feed him, like, oh, like, you must have been scared, like, you must feel this way, you right? Instead, it's like, yeah, like, you told us that, um, you know... <clears throat> this must be uh, an insanely terrifying thing. Like you said this thing, you said that thing, you, right? It's, it's always kind of like going back towards, you know, like what have you stated? Um, and then trying to, to work that organically into building a motive. You're like, yeah, I can understand why you'd be scared after you said this, this or that or whatever, right? And yourself. Well, there's not much I could have done. I mean, I don't have a, fi I'm not financially stable that I couldn't be home. Mm -hmm. I don't really have anywhere to go. So but you're saying like I could have been homeless and been living in a tent or something. You guys wouldn't have well, found me. Well, did you bond together with any of the other Trump supporters to try to figure out like how are you gonna no, make a game plan or? I was afraid of everybody. Game plan? No, I didn't talk. I really didn't want to tell anybody anything about what happened. Because uh, when I think about like defending yourself, because I know you were. Did we? Did I plan with somebody else? Did you... Do you think this could be good evidence of how some insane conspiracy people aren't completely shit racist nutcases start from good foundations? Like, it seems like this guy isn't a literal KKK member. I, yeah, what? I feel like um, that's like a point I've been trying to make for years. If you're just not figuring that out, then I've done a horrible job at communicating that to you. Um, all of these people are like technically victims of like grander conspiracies, but like the conspiracy isn't, you know, some globalist insane shit. The conspiracy is just people saying crazy shit online and then getting people to buy into it for views, right? That's the issue. That's the problem. But like... This is part of my whole, like, I don't think we should think of Nazis as evil people. Because as soon as you start labeling people as evil, you're dehumanizing them. Um, and I don't give a fuck about dehumanizing because it's mean or any stupid shit like that. That's not what I'm concerned about. The problem is, is when you dehumanize somebody, you view them as fundamentally different than other people. And if they're fundamentally different, that must mean that however they turned out, there's no possible way we could turn out like that. And that's the issue. You can't view people as evil because as soon as they take on a fundamental difference in character, you lose the ability to see potential commonalities between them and other people that could lead other people down the same path. Something no. Did we make plans? Did we organize? And no, which is it was all by like. Well, I'm just I'm asking about um because you were you were attacked right in at a protest. Uh, uh, Antifa folks that attacked you. Was it like in Beverly Hills or something like that? I mean, what do you mean attacked? Like they they fought assaulted. you assaulted. No. Is that 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 ever happened? I don't think so. Um, did that did that happen to people you know? I think you're talking about something else. Uh -huh. What are you talking about? Well, I'm just asking because I know there have been clashes with with Antifa and and some conservatives at protests. And, you know, just kind of like the example I gave there earlier, and and some of them have been violent. Like Antifa has been violent. Like, would you not agree? Yeah, but I, I'm not gonna incriminate any anyone that I know that's on my side. <laughs> I, I'm not asking you to incriminate anyone. I'm just, just saying, have you seen Antifa be violent at protests? You have, right? So I'm just concerned. Like, if I, if I see that, then I'm gonna prepare myself for that situation. No, no, I didn't. Um, did I buy any body armor or anything? No, helmets or no, no because I felt my words. I felt. I felt it. This might sound weird to you guys, but I would pray for to God to give me the words and the wisdom and the, to direct me to the right path and to protect me and to help 
to to give me the words to help other people and to open their eyes and I felt like I was I didn't need it to be um I never every every single time I, I, I faced Antifa or BLM I never once had any feeling ever of like fighting them or being aggressive or angry or, or stabbing someone or 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 anything like that. It, I saw them as as just confused or brainwashed or manipulated or stupid or something that they I, they, I just needed to talk to them and try to get to them, mm -hmm. and I, it was never a physical. They never tried to assault you or to hurt you. Yeah, they did. They did. They they tried to antagonize me and you know like slap me or try to steal my hat or something like that or push me or threaten me or posture up to me or whatever, but I'm not a... But how'd that make you feel, like, because you it can made, only it made, me it made me feel like I was doing something good. It made me feel like I was doing the right thing uh -huh. for the wrong... For they're the so right now, what they're trying really hard to get at, and it sounds like they're not going to be able to get there, but they're trying to get, like, you must have been upset that these people were, like, attacking you so much. Like, it must have upset you. You must have felt, like, f uh, afraid or something so that they can get to this point to where he's like, okay, so now what steps did you take to prepare yourself to fight with these people in the future? Because, right, they're establishing all of this, like, um, like motive intent, like, this premeditation, basically. This idea that, like, you've been upset upset by these people you know that they've like um, been attacking you in the past and now you want to take steps in the future but he's not really yielding here and he's saying well no i never really thought they were going to attack me that much i just i thought they were misguided you know i prayed to god everything's fine so they're, they're trying to like attack this from multiple angles to establish this bad people to be against me i felt that that was great okay i felt that that makes when, sense and when, when the enemy is after you and they don't like you you're doing something right right danny i, I gotta tell you that your story is kind of similar to actually some, with, with the exception of you, where you're at presently today. I have some friends who felt very similar to you. They felt like. Oh, so I'm curious. We'll see what he does here. I'm going to, I shouldn't make predictions. I'll be totally wrong. But it sounds like he's about to say like, why well, had some friends, they were in similar situations. And when things happened to them, they actually did take steps to prepare themselves. Um, you know, they wanted to make sure they weren't going to get hurt at rallies. They actually took steps to prepare themselves from violent other protesters to try to give them like a story to latch onto. And if a cop has a friend that did that, then maybe it's okay. Maybe we'll see. The 2020 election was stolen. They felt like... Trump had won and won righteously, um, and that it was just a matter of time before that would be found out that, or the government that took over post-Trump would round people up. Yeah, that's And in response Q, to that- Talking about QAnon and all that. Yeah, that, some of that's Q, Q stuff for sure. And in response to that, people did a lot of things. They went out and they, they made preparations yeah. for their family. They had bug out bags. They did all sorts of stuff. Was there any of that kind of stuff that, that went on for you? Like, did you make any preparations thinking like the government's gonna come around me up? I need to get a bug out bag or I need to, um, you know, buy extra food and store it up because we might be hunkered down here. I think when it comes to charging crimes, this piece of knows what I mean. There's a huge difference between like a crime that happens in the heat of the moment or the passion of the moment or whatever versus like you spent some time deliberating and considering this. So that's why they're trying really, really, really hard to build towards this like, you must have thought about this before it happened. They're, they're trying really hard to, to build on that. And they've, they've missed it every time. So now here's like the personal friends have tried this order to see if they can get a hook on here. For a while. If I was financially better or well off, I, yeah, I probably would have. Yeah, didn't, didn't it just didn't happen. happen. I just don't have the means. I see. Mm -hmm. so, so you go to the rallies in August. All my extra money went, goes to, was, was going to gas money to get to a rally. <laughs> yeah. So you go to the rallies from August through the election, right? And then the election occurs and it looks like Biden wins and the election looks stolen. How, fill us in the gap now. That's like mid-November of 2020. How do you get to January 6th? Like, how, what's, what else happens in that period of time? Trump called us, Trump called us, did you see? Tell me about that. How did, how did he let you guys know to come to DC? 
if he's the commander in chief and the leader of our country and he's calling for help, I thought he was calling for help. I thought he was, I thought we were doing the right thing. I thought we were just, I had no plans of what was gonna happen. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I'm not a leader of anybody. And uh, I just, I, had a, I felt what was good intentions of going and being involved and being a part of and joining whatever. I didn't know what was going to happen. I really didn't. I've never seen a hawk. I felt it was the last time that I was going to be, that I could see the president's hawk. He doesn't come to California and do speeches. I've never seen him in person um, speak, so I wanted to go see him speak. He called for his supporters. And if I'm his supporter that's rallying for him every weekend, and I volunteered for his campaign, and I'm out there arguing, I'm on social media, I'm wearing his gear, sure. and I was like, I need to be there. And um, when his speech was over, I went to the um, metal detectors because they uh, took my megaphone away. I had to leave it there, and so I went back and I went to go uh, to the area where everybody was dropping their stuff off in the grass and I heard, I, I grabbed my mango if I found it and I heard some girl um, telling another girl um, oh my mom just sent me this on the on Facebook it says that they're storming buildings in DC and that's what she was telling her friend that I overheard and I was like huh so the whole crowd is marching to the Capitol and I just followed the crowd and then when we got there, it looked like it was, there was a ton of people already going, like there was, there was like already like a green fence that was torn down. Cause I remember, I remember like walking past some, some fence that was, there was clearly a lot, there was, it, I was clearly not in the beginning. There was a lot of people that were there already mm -hmm. and they were trying to get in. And I didn't, there's no leaders, just no, there's no, playbook there's no guidance there's just it's just you don't know what's going on you just see what you just look around and you got people over here singing a song or doing an interview waving their flags and then you go up the, to the capitol building and they're they're getting sprayed in their eyes and just it's totally like chaos and havoc and all this stuff and then like so it's like it's like a whole mixture of everybody and it's like, if you wanted to get in the building, you were over there with those people. If you wanted to do an interview, you were over here with these people. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of curious, uh, Danny, just um, how did you get to D.C. to begin with? Like, did you fly? Did you drive? Did you take a bus or a train? Or I'd rather you... not say, because I don't, if you guys don't know, I don't want to get anyone in trouble. <laughs> He's so yeah, smart. Go back, go back to explaining your position and you you followed the people past yeah he knows um and yeah i just i just where did you end up did you end up in the interview side or did you end up in the people going into the capital I, side? I i ended up going up to the up the scaffolding to the uh, top to the top where the flag was draped mm -hmm. there was a big flag a very tall scaffolding for like where the media was going to have cameras set up that one or did you go up to the the, the facade the face of the building um, it was, it, it's the part where, you know, where they do the inauguration that like the little yep. balcony mm -hmm. to the left of that, there was a big, um, scaffolding okay. in the middle mm -hmm. that stuck out. Yep. I just went up that. And, and then what? And that's how I got to the top and I just kind of hung out there for a while and soaked it in and looked around and seen what was going on. And then what happened? At some point you got to the Capitol steps. Yeah, I, I went up to the Capitol steps and I was there for a little while, left, and then I came back again. Just walked around and just kind of saw what was going on. And you think that's why we're, you're here today? Is because you climbed the scaffolding? 
Ooh, yeah, pushing a little harder. Yeah, yeah, obviously. You want to talk about that? Because I, I tell you what, everybody else is going to talk about that. Yeah, I'm pretty ashamed. I mean, that that like. Enrique said, there, there's a story that's being written about Danny Rodriguez. And right now, DC has told that story to a judge. And the court of public opinion has a story from the Huffington Post, has a story from Water Spider on Twitter, from Antifa and BLM. <laughs> Damn. They're telling the Danny seen, Rodriguez story. You guys have probably seen more videos than me. I don't know all these videos. Chad Loader, Desert Border, um, all these guys. They're all telling the Danny Rodriguez story. <laughs> I haven't seen any of those. But here's your opportunity to tell us your story. My story is just that we thought that we were going to save America. We were wrong. At some point, you ended up on that cap the Capitol steps with the taser in your hand. And somehow, you felt what you were doing was the right thing to do. Somehow, you were maybe misled. Maybe that call that the Commander-in-Chief gave was that strong call that tugged on your heart and said, now's the time to protect your country, to be a true patriot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you got up there with a lot of gusto and a lot of desire to be a true patriot, but the problem it, that we have right now is we only get one side of the story. And my words aren't going to be the story that, that writes Danny Rodriguez's story. And you had asked earlier about how do you help yourself out of this situation. And if you really want to help yourself out, you tell us 100% of the truth. And you let the U.S. Attorney's Office in D.C. know that you're willing to cooperate and explain to them everything that happened and take responsibility because I've done this game for a long time as a law enforcement officer, so I'm going on 23 years. And everybody that I know that I have worked with, where they have stepped forward and told the courts and told the prosecutor, look, I, I take responsibility. The judge looks at that favorably. In fact, the law I mean, it says that we have to take in consideration your cooperation, if you cooperate. And, you're, uh, and any attorney would tell you that. And so all we can do right now is we, we're in a position to make a recommendation to tell the prosecutor, look, here's the Danny Rodriguez that we heard. And here's the Danny Rodriguez that told us his story. He told us what happened. He told us his his point of view and he shared with us and he he wants to come forward and he wants to explain everything but right now you're kind of leaving us in a lurch right now because we're we don't know the story <clears throat> what am i leaving out well you're not telling us about how you ended up on the capitol steps in the tunnel how officer fanon got pulled out i don't know how he got pulled out i came up i walked back up I think I left. I, I was in the tunnel, and they were like... They were, were you there when they were doing the heave-ho and squeezing that off? That's when I got out of there, because they were smashing me. I think they were sma Somebody else in front... Okay, so somebody else right in front of me got um, pepper sprayed right in, the, like, right in their eyes. I've been pepper sprayed, and it's freaking bad. And were you he, pepper sprayed there at the no, Capitol? Oh, no, okay. no, This no. is a previous time. Yeah, I was pepper sprayed by BLM. They had a... Oh, excuse me. They had this, there was this guy in front of me. So everybody, oh 
man, it was it, it was just so tight. Like you could not breathe. Like there was. If you were in this guy's position, what would be the best course of action during this interview? Um, unironically, probably as boring as it is to just shut the fuck up. Like. I would have to review the footy, the video evidence or the video footage available to see like what it looks like because like in a situation like this, people always get mad on the left and the right because they're like, oh my God, why isn't everybody being charged with a crime? Why didn't this guy get arrested? Why didn't this guy... The reality is, is that depending on the types of video evidence available, um, it's hard to prove certain things. And it might be the case, now I'm not saying this, I haven't seen the video evidence, but it might be the case that if you viewed the footage, the situation is so f***ing chaotic that the kid could just run to the store like, I didn't mean to tase a cop. Um, I was just, I was in a crowd, people were pushing me, I had a taser, I didn't know what the f*** was going on. Like, I, I tased the dude next to me, it was a cop, but I didn't know it was a cop. I didn't mean to tase the cop, I had no idea. I was just getting pushed from all sides, right? Now, I haven't seen the video footage, but if that, if, if it's possible that you could sell that story to a jury, he's destroying the ability to do that right now in this interrogation. That might, it might be the case that they could sell that story, you know? Just people pushing you, like you, you, like, like I'm in the tunnel, but I'm not pushing, I'm, I'm getting squished. There's a guy in front of me who got sprayed and he, um, I, he, 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 he got his body turned around so he's facing me, but he can't leave. Like he's getting, like he's getting squished and he's blind and he's facing the wrong way and, and I'm looking at him and I'm trying to pull him out of there. So I, 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 I pulled him out of there and um, I left. I left the tunnel when, when, you, when the heave-ho was going on. That's when I got out of there because I was getting squished. Did you participate in that heave-ho though? No, because... I'm getting squished. Okay. No, the you didn't say heave-ho or anything no, like that? No, the, the, he, the heave-ho is coming. I think, okay, so what I learned from the heave-ho later on that was... I don't know if this is true or not, but I think that they were doing heave ho to smash a, an officer. That's what it appears on the video. Okay, so when they were doing the heave ho, at, when when it was when I was in there and that was going on, I didn't know that. I thought they were. It was not for. What I learned, I think, afterwards was there was a cop in the side mm -hmm. by a door or something, yeah. and he was getting squished. And I didn't. I don't know if that's what they were. They were trying to smash him or not. But in the in the there the. There was like, the officers had shields and like, they were on a, I don't know how deep that, I don't know how many of them there were and that they could hold us back, but there was so much patriot, like there were so many people pushing on me yeah. that I don't know, that I was, I was getting my lungs crushed so I yeah. couldn't breathe. So that, I don't know how they were able to hold us back, yeah. but that's when I got out of there. I, I pulled that guy out of there and I got out of there because I couldn't breathe and that guy was all, all sprayed. And then that's when... Um, yeah, he almost said Patriots. It sounds like he almost did. Like, uh, but maybe he was using for another word on it. Or something break. And then you went back up the steps? I went back up the steps and they were they were pulling someone out. And I didn't know what, who they were pulling out. I thought it was one of the, the Trump supporters they were pulling out. And then I saw who it was. It was a, PewDiePie officer. moment? What? Yeah. So what happened? So you saw the video what happened. Yeah. Danny, this is like my colleague said, this is your opportunity I'm to so tell us. I'm so like embarrassed and ashamed. And, uh, the way you can help yourself is by being completely honest with us, okay? And that means not leaving things How do out. I pick this up? This thing I dropped. Okay. Um, do you know what a lie of omission is? <clears throat> live omission is is kind of like if I ask you uh, oh, a question and and I don't ask you like the the direct question like when's the last if I'm selling you a car and I, and I'm saying uh, and I'm buying the car from you and I say when's the last time the car's been serviced mm -hmm. and you're like oh it was, it was serviced last week it's good to go. Mm -hmm. But you didn't tell me that when it was serviced, they found out the transmission was shot, tires were bad, okay. all this stuff. So you, those are, those are you know facts that I would want to know, and what I was trying to get at. In, you okay. didn't necessarily lie, but it's a lie. A video of him tasing the cop. Um, my foot's gonna be here, so I gotta run down and get this in. For context, watch him assault the cop. Hold on. If the, like, oh man. I can't see, I'm not gonna show you because I don't know if I get banned on this fucking website or not, okay? If this is like the only video available, man, dude, like this, it feels like the kid could say like, I didn't even know I was tasting the cop, I was just, you know? But, 
don't know how you can see anything in that video. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard to make it anything. And then someone else says, that clip is pretty damning. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Um, okay, I'll be back. I'm gonna get my phone one sec. Good luck. Liable mission because you left key facts out. Um, uh oh. Now they're putting the pressure on. No, I just I just came up to the steps again and I saw them pulling them out. And they taste them. How many times did you taste them? They need how many times is important because like oh you taste them ten times you think that was an accident. So the problem with the story thus far is they don't really have anything strong that they can charge him with right because. It sounds pretty sympathetic towards the uh, assailant, I guess you could say, right? Um, so now they need something more like, okay, hold on, you're not giving us the full story, kid. You, we know you went there to tase that officer. Like, we need more information, right? So they're trying to lean in on him to get like, or lean into him to get like something a little bit more solid to show that he had like the state of mind to go and tase a police officer, you know? Not that he's just some poor kid that wound up there. Jeez. Where'd you tase him at? Like on his body where? In the neck. Did you do it twice? Because no, the video sure. shows it twice. No. No, the video. No, the video. If if the video shows it twice, it's a replay or something. So you just did it once. Yeah. Why did you take? Notice it? how police officers are allowed to lie about evidence. The police officer tried it there, but the accused seems to recall the situation strongly enough. He's like, no, I only tasted him one time. Fuck you, right? Not with the. Fuck you. I don't know why I added that, but. He was struggling. The video does show it twice. Uh, I mean, you can, if you have another video, that's fine. Or if you're like Superman, I can't make out shit from the video that shows the guy getting tased. I, I don't know, I can't, I can't see anything from that, but. I want you to. He's the guy in the red hat. Hold on. Okay. I, dude, I, this, the video is like an optical illusion. I can't tell who the fuck is who. Okay. It looks like he definitely tased him one time. Does he? I, 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 if he does tase him twice, I don't believe that you can see that he does it twice here. Maybe he did, but it's hard to say. It's super hard to say. They use the pinch and zoom. You think in your mind that... In my partner and I, we, we got here to talk to you, and it's not January 7th, it's not January 10th, it's March 31st. What do you think we've been doing between January 6th and March 31st? Rounding people up? No. Rounding people up. We've been, we've been focused on you. We've been trying to figure you out. And we know a lot about who your friends are. We know a lot about how you got to DC. We know a lot about how you spent your money before you went to DC. Can and you share any of this with me? Well, here's the deal. What do you mean? How, what, what money do I have? What he's, what he's trying to say is that we know about 99% of the questions that we're asking you so that there's that it's completely clear and all our cards are on the table that it's really important that you be completely honest with us and tell us everything especially without us saying that these facts and then you later agreeing to them it looks better if you just give us those facts okay if you want to go like now i wouldn't expect anybody me included to have the state of mind to do this in the middle of a high stress situation but if you want to go like ultra and if you want to pretend you're a death note or some shit in this situation all right if somebody tells me this information now again i don't fault the fbi people or anything here because i wouldn't be thinking on this level in the middle of this but if somebody tells me we've already got all the information about you okay we already know all the facts the reason why you do that is because you're trying to establish that, like, if you f up, I'm going to know about it. But the problem is, is so far, it sounds like they haven't caught a single contradiction. So that threat is incredibly hollow. Not only is it incredibly hollow, it would, if you're thinking very, very high level on this, it actually should bolster the confidence in your position. Because, oh, you've done a whole bunch of background information on me and I haven't said a single thing that's contradicted any of it that, that yet, then it sounds like either one, 
I've been completely truthful, I'm in the right, or two, you're trying to dig for something that more specifically you don't have information on. So technically, this is like a vulnerable move for the police officers, but they probably don't view it that way because traditionally they're not, like somebody being interrogated isn't a thing on that level, like, oh yeah, blah, 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 yeah, oh yeah, I can 100%, you know, I know what's happening, I'm L from Death Note. But like, yeah, t technically they're, they're, if, if they're, if you're looking at this, and you're very calmly analyzing, like, oh, I'm actually in a powerful position right now. But we're not trying to trick you. We just want you to 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 put your everything on the table. And uh, I don't want it to be. A, we're not. If we're going to put all cards on the table, I'll tell you right now. There's other people today that are being talked to. And the, we remember we talked about the story that's being written by about Danny, right? Danny gets to choose if he writes a story today with us. But right now, the story that's being told is by DC, is by Antifa BLM and the Huffington Post, and is going to be told by the people that we're talking to today that choose to talk to us. And they may tell a story about the Danny Rodriguez. So if you're, if you're making things up or you're leaving things out, that puts us in a bad spot, because we can't go to the prosecutor and say, no, no, I haven't made Danny's a stand. Danny's a stand-up guy. I haven't made anything. Made, I haven't lied or made anything up. Okay. Well, but why do you think we're bringing this up to you about lying and, and making things up or, or leaving things out? Or lies of omission. We're we're bringing that up because we want to give you a chance right now to to clear that up with us, clear that space up with us. We we know that you had a taser. Someone gave me a taser there. Someone at DC? Or before you got to DC? No, a stranger. A stranger? It was actually a stranger. Are you lying to us, Danny? No. You know, it's a separate crime to lie to a federal agent. Okay, I mean, I'm not lying. J just so you know, it's, it's, it, it is, it's, a, it's a crime to lie to us, okay? I asked you, and I asked, that's, that could be a separate charge. I asked if anyone had a taser. That, another thing, and now now you are starting to get to an area where the person is going to know um, that they don't have to be very smart to realize, hold on, you're fucking around. If he's actually being truthful, also keep in mind, I don't have all the facts here. I, the, the FBI should have more than, than I do. I don't, I don't know all the facts here. But if they are lying, and now they're pushing like, well, we know the truth. Well, we know the truth. Whenever somebody tries to well, shit, I'm like, well, I know what you did, blah, blah, blah. I was like, wait, no, you don't. You obviously you don't know because what I'm telling you right now is true. If you think something different, you either got bad info or you're trying to bullshit me to try to get me to say some shit that never happened, right? Now you're leaning way too hard into it, but we'll see what happens. Maybe they have some other type of information or they've reached the desperation point where they're like, we don't have like a good mens rea. We don't have a good state of mind for the crime that was committed here. Now we need to start like applying a lot of pressure to get something. Now we're only an hour into this and it goes on for like another hour and a half or two hours. So we'll see, I guess. I said, we need, we need a taser. Who gave you a taser? I don't know. I really don't know. And they didn't get it back. I like I turned. I tried to do it back, and they, I kept it. And no, I don't have it now. Where Where is let it? me let me stop you I right there. Threw it away. Uh oh. Where? When I came back from D.C. Dan, like my colleague was saying, there are other be people being talked to right now. Okay, they're talking to other agents like us, and they're telling us their story. Who, who and you're talking to. Not not gonna, I know you're saying. And Danny, it shouldn't matter to you because you're being completely honest with us, right? Yes. So it shouldn't matter who we're talking to or what information they're giving us. Right. And I'm saying that because it is absolutely important right now, all cards on the table. I I I don't want I don't want any confusion for you right now, okay? It is imperative that you be completely honest with us because all those people are gonna say something, right? And they're gonna tell a story. They're gonna tell their version of the story and what happened. What, the, with the way that the officer is talking, he's either being reckless or maybe he's intentionally misleading and I would fall for this trap, but it really sounds to me like they don't have what they need. When you start saying things like somebody could say something rather than maybe somebody's already said something. We've already interviewed 15 people, okay? We've already interviewed. 
They've already told us their story, Danny, right? Rather, when you, when you phrase this in a, in, a pre, in a future tense, like they're going to tell their story. They're going to say something different, right? When you phrase it that way, makes it sound to me very subtly like you don't actually have what you're looking for. You don't have what you need. Um, I'm not gonna tell you anymore. Now, maybe the cop is laying like some super advanced trap or maybe some other shit is going on and I just don't know like the, the detail, the evidence that they have. But um, yeah, like, I don't know, we'll see. And if their version matches up and it's not what yours is, there's gonna be a problem, right? And right now, you're the one looking at, you're in the most trouble right now, okay? I think you understand that already. So who do you think DC is gonna look at when those stories don't match up? I, so I, I say that because I need you to be completely honest with me. Nobody, I did all, I don't have anybody else. Okay. I was there by I mean, I, I, let, let, let's bust the bubble for a minute. Uh oh. Okay. <clears throat> let's talk about the van trip from LA to DC. Okay. Uh oh. Who's in the van with you? Um, we had some strangers go with us that we met, and there was. Uh, strangers that were in the there Patriots was, 45 MAGA in the chat group after yeah we met them through that on that day though so there was people that went with us that just wanted to go to DC that wanted to like it up there was a woman named Marcy there was a guy named Al there was a guy named You know, my friend Edward, and um, Andy, Asian guy, Andy. Asian Andy? Tell us about those people. I Wait, is there a chance? Is this the Asian Andy? There's no way, right? 